Welcome back everybody to our 2D sandbox series uh, in Unity. So today we're going to create some auto jump so that we don't get stuck in corners like this, which we just want to be able to just jump up as we want. Um, and before we do that though, however, we do have a problem to fix at the moment, which is to do with placing blocks. Uh, if I mine a type of block, let's say snow walls, and then I mine a different type of block, such as... Um, Sorry, snow block and the snow walls. If I was to place the snow block first, as you can see, console is fine. Um, however, if I place a different type of block after with a gap here, I get an error because obviously our code over here in our remove function uh, in our inventory script, uh, ignore this debug.log. I was just testing that earlier to try and fix the issue. Um, here we're comparing the item name with the item name. However, we're looping through every single slot. Not every slot, of course, has an item name. Some of the slots are actually null, which obviously makes sense. So the first thing we just have to check as well is if inventory slots um, dot item actually exists. So not equal to null. And that will actually fix the issue for us. Um, hopefully. So I'm just going to quickly test that and then once that's done I'm going to get straight into creating auto jump um, because that's going to be a little bit of fun. So the way we're going to do auto jump is by um, using two ray casts, one at the bottom and then one at the head. Um, that way we can say if the bottom one is touching a uh, block and the top one isn't then jump. In the case where they're both touching a block then obviously we don't want to be able to jump. So that's kind of like the best method I've found to create auto jump. It, obviously we're creating two ray casts so it is it's going to take up some performance but not as much as um you would expect it to it actually works pretty well i've used it in many other games 3d 2d and all that anyway let's test this so i'm going to place this dirt one first and then the dirt wall and we still get the error what if we just check if that one is not equal to null okay so break this break this Place this, place this, and as you can see, no more error. Perfect, that one is fixed. Nice. Um, let's get going on raycasting and all that then. If you guys haven't done raycasting before, then this is going to be quite fun. So basically, we're going to have two functions in our player controller. Um, our first function is going to be a public bool. Or rather, this could just be a normal bool, but I'll do public, why not? Um, and this is going to be put raycast. And this is going to return the value of true or false. So for now, let's just say return uh, true. And this is going to return true if there is a block there, false if there isn't a block there. And then we're also going to have a public ball um, head ray cast. Nice. And then return true. Um, and now I'm going to put the jump into a function. So our jump code over here. Um, where is it? I've lost it. Is this fixed update? Is that why? No, this is update. Should be a fixed update. Yes, here. So this bit, I'm just gonna put into its own function. That's our jumping code here. Um, so let me just do jumping, make our life easier. Um, so that way I can just check if we jump, then jump, uh, as well as if, um, wait, is it this bit? Horizontal is this? No. This is jumping. What am I doing? I'm confused. There we go. Yes, this bit. So that's going to be its own function, um, this bit section here. Uh, that way I can just call this whenever I want, essentially. So control X that from there. Scroll down, and I'm just going to have a void jump. And it is two lines, so technically we probably wouldn't need to put it there. but. Um, should I, should I? You know what? Okay, fine. I've convinced myself. Let's not create a function for it. Since it is only two lines, it's probably not worth um, creating a separate function for that. We can just type in the two lines again. Um, so what it's going to do basically is just say, if put raycast and not head raycast, then if on ground, then jump. So basically, if the foot is colliding with something and the head isn't colliding with something, then check if I'm on the ground, in which case then jump, um, which is going to do our auto jump. 
Um, obviously, with this code implemented at the moment, you should see that your player does not stop jumping. Um, ever. <laughs> so I'm going to test that real quick. I think um, if he wants to jump for me. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. head raycast, let's make this false. Um, that will fix the issue. There you go. So this is what's going to happen. E each time I get close to one of these edges, it's just going to jump up like that. Um, we could make it so that he jumps up with half the jump force, so that because jump force allows us to jump up two blocks. With half the jump force, he'll jump up one block, naturally. So um, where is our function there? So here I say, this is our auto jump it. Obviously, we haven't written the ray class just yet, but if I just do um, jump force divided by two, or rather, even better, 0.5f. The reason I do times 0.5f is because computers are better at adding um, than dividing. Well, so multiplication obviously is just another way of adding the same thing multiple times. That's why in computer science, we refer to it as adding and dividing as subtracting in some loose way. So there you go. As soon as I get to one of these edges, I'll be able to jump. However, now I can't jump with half point um times point five. So I might just do times point six just so I can actually get above blocks. I was getting these warnings, but I don't care about them at the moment. Um it's not breaking my game, so it's alright. We'll fix them later. And um so he still gets stuck a little bit, but that's because of the sinking of the jump. Remember that he's only gonna jump once we get near a block anyway. So at the moment he's jumping forever because we haven't set the ray cast up. Um, so let's set the raycast up then. So return true is not going to obviously happen. It's going to return false instead. The only time it's going to return true is if uh, we should probably create a new raycast as well. Uh, okay, so the way we create raycast is physics 2D. Not physics 2D. Um, ray 2D. Is it ray? No. Raycast hit 2D. Yes, hit equals physics dot raycast, or uh, physics 2D dot raycast, yep. Um, and then this takes in a couple of parameters. Uh, our origin is actually going to be, uh, let's see, has to be the middle of our, it's essentially the player's knees is where our origin should be. Uh, and then vector 2 dot. So let's see. How can we determine where the player's knees are? Is a question that we have to answer. <laughs> so our legs are positioned at minus 0.29 from our original root. So that means the ray cast will shoot from around here. However, we should probably shoot them from around here, which is minus 0.5, uh, which actually makes sense. So it's going to be vector two dot up times negative 0 0.5. Vector 2 direction is going to be vector 2 dot right. Float distance, I'm just going to say 1f. And then it would want a layer mask as well. Um, layer mask, please. Contact filter, no, no, no. Here we go, int layer mask. So our tiles should be on their own layer then. Or rather, it should be everything that's not on our player's layer. Yes. So, let's say... In fact, I shouldn't do that there, should I? No. Um, I should create a layer mask separately. So, let's say public layer mask. Layer mask. <laughs> and then down here, can I say... Layer mask. Yes, I can. No errors? No, good. All right, so our layer mask is just going to, we're going to set in the inspector now. Um, and what that means is that it's not going to collide with our player, but it's going to collide with everything else, which is how we, of course, want it to be. Um, and then I'm just going to return, 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 hit. There we go. So hit is actually a Boolean. And it's going to return true if this collides with something. Um, with that done, this is actually quite similar for our head ray cast. It's literally going to be the same thing, except times 0.5. 1f vector 2, right, layer mask, yes, cool. So, let's clear that now. And then in our player root object, now you'll see 
a layer mask, which is currently set to nothing. We actually want this to be set to everything. However, we need to put our player on its own layer. So we're going to click on our player object, go to overrides, apply all really quick, and then go to layer, click on default, and then add layer. And then on layer six or whichever next available layer you have. In fact, I recommend layer eight, but we'll use level, uh, layer six for now. And I'm just going to call this player. Uh, I would not put it on user layer th three, or if you have any layers available here, I'd put it at the end. Um, just because the bottom one is on top. So then we want to set the player's layer, of course, back on the inspector to layer should be now player. Yes, and children. And then down here in our layer mask, I just want to uncheck player. And it will come up as mixed here, which is good. And then overrides, apply all. Press play. So what I'm going to do is actually do a debug.draw array. Draw array. And this is just going to take in a couple of parameters just so we can actually visualize the ray cast as well vector 3 direction is going to be vector 2 dot right yes yes um in fact this might actually have to be negative right thinking about it now but let's just do this just so we can visualize it in our inspector uh, in our scene view so if we press play now it might be because we haven't given it the color yes color um dot white Let's do color dot white. Didn't work. Um, so why did it not work? Float duration, let's say 10f. 10f. It should default to one, but it might be defaulting to zero as well. Let's just make this super, super long ray just to see if anything comes up. Transform dot position minus vector two dot up times that. Uh, I should be vector three dot up. Yes. Um, transform the position minus vector to this. Is that going to appear down here now? Do I get a line? I get a line up there. Uh, is that make sense? Minus vector two. Yes, minus vector two dot up times zero point five is gonna put that down here near his knees. Yes, perfect. Exactly where we want it. Um, and then I just need to make sure that transform dot right is actually going to be vector two dot right, and it might have to be minus vector two dot right as well. And that should face it forward from the player. Yes, perfect. Okay, so now I just have to do the same thing over here. So copy this, transform the position minus um, vector. Uh, it will be plus this time, yes. So this is going to put it on his head. Uh, it did, but it's in facing the wrong direction because this should be vector 2 dot up. Uh, vector minus vector 2 dot right, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I've done this so many times and I forgot how to do it. Every single game I make. Okay, there we go. So exactly what it's gonna look like. It's gonna, once it detects a block here, it's gonna jump if there's no block up here. Uh, we just have to make sure that we set the same parameters down here. So yes, um, I was on the right track. I just forgot how vectors and transforms work. So this should be actually this one. Control C, paste, and then the direction is going to be vector not a negative vector two dot right. Um, this again negative vector two dot right. The position for the head one is going to be transform the position plus vector three dot up times zero point five, uh, and that should be all our math done. Here we go. Never mind. It works perfectly. So as soon as I approach a block now, he jumps automatically. Fantastic. And then he doesn't jump if he's already in the air because we don't want that, obviously. So he won't be able to jump up there. Um, he won't be able to jump up here. He won't be able to jump up there, but he will be able to jump here. One thing I am concerned about is if, for example, he's just standing still, he's going to keep trying to jump. 
Um, so basically, I just have to make it so he only jumps if he's moving. So here, I can just say and not that one and input power is it input no um, movement dot x is not equal to zero. That way, if I'm just standing still facing a block, I'm not continuously jumping because it looks a bit weird. I will only jump if obviously I'm trying to move in that direction. Here we go. Yeah, it works. If I just face it, I start, don't jump. Yes, okay. Oh, cool. Congratulations, guys. We have implemented successful auto jump, except it's kind of hard to test because we spawned in the desert. So I'm just going to build myself a staircase. Boom. Um, if it works. What? Okay, so we jump up there, but I can't auto jump in this direction. Um, oh, wait, I think I know what it is. Okay, so I think I've worked it out, guys. Um, we have to take into account the player's scale, uh, of course, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, since when he's facing this way, our scale on the x is 1. When he's facing this way, it's minus 1. So... Let's just reset this second one. Um, in our code, we just have to take that into account. So we will do minus vector two dot right times transform dot local scale dot x, and that could either face in the opposite direction or the proper direction. We're gonna find out now. If I do that, there we go. Cool. If I press play, uh, theoretically this should work on both sides. Okay, so I can jump that way. Makes sense. I can jump this way? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes. All right. So, yeah, that was the issue. <laughs> All righty. Nice. Um, he does still get stuck very slightly at the edge of the block. So one thing we could do is either make him jump higher or increase the ray's length so that it detects the edge of the block before, uh, like earlier. So those are some things you can mess around with on your own. I um. Let me sh it's quite straightforward to do it. This 1f is the length of the ray. And then I'm going to get rid of that there. So yes, like I said, this 1f bit here, that is just the length of the array. I don't know if I can do this. There we go. Add that bit in if you want. That won't break your code. It's a comment, so it's fine. Um, so mod modify that if you as you wish. And then up here, when we jump, this is your um, jump multiplier for uh, auto jumping. So basically, if you want him to jump the maximum, like normal height, then you just make this one. If you want to do it half, then you know 0.5. If you want to turn auto jump off, then you can just make this zero, and it won't matter. Um, Alternatively, you can just have an if statement around here that says auto jump on and off, uh, and then have that as like a setting in game. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to cover how to do that because that is a bit irrelevant to the sandbox bit. <laughs> so that is actually going to do it for today. Auto jump implemented very nicely, um, reliably. We're not messing around with rigid bodies because if we did do that, that could mess with our physics quite a lot, and we don't want to do that because yes, unreliable. Um, and the, as well as messing around with rigid bodies is, it, it can sometimes, not all the time, sometimes though, uh, give us different results every time. Whereas this is just going to give us the same result consistently, which is good. That is how we want it to be. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching guys. I will catch you in the next one. Take care and peace.